Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. Uh, Disney should stay out of politics, according to the New York Times. Wow, you don't say. You one, don't one say. Who else has been saying that for a while? Ah, so there's an article in the New York Times that made the rounds talking about how Disney has historically stayed out of the political fray and uh, other people have been talking about how Disney seems to have backed off from the Florida bill drama. Well, they stay out of the political fray. It depends, because when Iger was there, they were constantly, you know, doing something. He was leveraging something. Yeah. Especially yeah. towards the end. Yeah, because, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Iger probably wanting to run for office, but we're going to talk about this. Again, coming from the New York Times, not just Clownfish TV. It's mm -hmm. not just Clownfish TV making stuff up. It's the New York Times. Reputable uh, newspaper, right? Uh, well, so, that's questionable, but yeah. <laughs> Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 263,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Mm -hmm. I greatly appreciate it. We do talk a lot about Disney. Uh, we talk a lot about the Disney situation in Florida in regards to Disney needing to stay out of politics. Yes. Haven't really gotten into the uh, specifics of the Florida bill. You can go do your own research on it and draw your own conclusions on it. But what we've been talking about is Disney not being able to win this by taking sides in politics. Basically, they're saying they pissed everybody off, which is what we've been saying. Yeah, so again, coming from the New York Times, Disney, built on fairy tales and fantasy, confronts the real world. That is their choice. They chose right. to confront the real world. Uh, the entertainment behemoth spent decades avoiding even the whiff of controversy, but it has increasingly been drawn into the partisan political I'd say in the fray. last, like, four years or so, especially. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, it definitely has. And that's why people are so angry with with disney it's not just you know what they've been backing but the fact that like people go to disney parks and they watch disney movies to escape the real world and you get hit upside the head with it and when you've got so many people working at disney right now um you know especially in the studio side of things it wants to make sure that you know you know that, that they're on the right side of history mm -hmm. And you, the consumer, uh, you're in the wrong and you need to be uh, ed educated. Mm -hmm. need to be educated. You know, people can smell that shit a mile away. Well, Epcot's edutainment, so what are they going to do to Epcot now? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, well, you know, we'll see. Yeah, Disney theme parks outright promise an escape from reality with welcome signs that read, Here you leave today and enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. Mm -hmm. However, real world ugliness has been creeping into the Magic Kingdom. In this hyper-partisan movement, both sides of the, the, the uh, political divide have been pounding on Disney, endangering one of the world's best-known brands, and that, for many, symbolizes America itself as it tries to navigate a rapidly changing entertainment industry. I wouldn't say it's rapidly changing entertainment. Is, well, it is, and the fact that there's a bunch of people on Twitter screaming about stuff, and then Hollywood, because they keep kissing Twitter's ass and wrongfully thinking that it's indicative of the world, keeps kowtowing to this. Yeah, and that's that's the thing, and we're going to... Unless you're China. Unless you're China. Then they change it all for you. They say out of one side of their face, you are a bigot if you don't like if you don't like this change, you're a bigot. And then they change it for China. <sighs> of course they do. Of course they do. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. So they get into the Florida bill, the, the quote-unquote, quote-unquote, don't say gay bill. But they said in, in trying to offend no one, Disney had seemingly lost everyone. Right. Now, that's what I want to talk about, because before... The don't say gay drama, there was, uh, you know, drama on the left. People were angry that Disney wasn't doing enough virtue signaling. Right. And, then and they've they, already made all kinds of changes, guys. They've taken out the ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. They've taken that out of the thing. Which was ridiculous. They, I think that they, was They've made ridiculous. all kinds of changes internally. They have the reimagined tomorrow. We've had different things leak about that, you know, including their, their purity tests and all that kind of shit. Um, so they're already doing all these things, you know, on one side. And then because they didn't do enough. Like, when this came out, they didn't say enough. Well, it wouldn't have mattered if he had said anything. It wasn't going to have any impact on what, whether that bill was passed or not. Now, this is really interesting because they talk about how they actually lay the blame at Bob Iger's feet. Well, it is at Bob Iger's feet, which I've been saying. So let's, let's, let's look at these couple of paragraphs. This is very interesting. They said, the mission for the Disney brand has always been really clear. Do nothing that might upset or confuse the family audience said Martin Kaplan, the Norman Lear Professor of Entertainment, Media, and Society at the University of Southern California, and a former Disney executive. Fun for all, nothing objectionable. 
Let's all be transformed by the magic wand, but we are so divided today, so revved up that even Disney is having a hard time bringing us together. That's right, because it always was. Like, it, it was for everybody. Like, you, were, no one was excluded. Yep. Unless you could, but well, that's not true. Those who couldn't afford it were excluded, but those who could afford it didn't matter. They took your money no matter who you were. Avoiding socially divisive topics, of course, in itself reflects a certain worldview. The Disney company's founder, after all, was an anti-union right. conservative. That's not untrue. That is not untrue. Main Street USA patriotism is on prominent display in the theme parks. The traditional Christmas story is told each December at Disney World in Florida and Disneyland in California with the candlelight processional Bible verses and, and all that. It's crazy popular, by the way. It is. It is. Um, in recent years, there has been a noticeable change. This is where they drag Iger into it. Robert A. Iger, who served as the CEO from 2005 to 2020, pushed the world's largest entertainment company to emphasize diverse casting and storytelling. As he said at Disney's 2017 stakeholder or shareholder meeting, referring to inclusion and equality, we can take those values, which we deem important, socially and actually change people's behavior. Change people's behavior. Right. Disney now it's their job to change your behavior. Get people to be more accepting of the multiple differences and cultures and races and all other facets of our lives Here's and our people. The thing though, people were already accepting of, of all that. You know, people, a lot of people would have agreed, okay, five years ago people would all lot of people would have agreed about diversity and inclusion. Um because it was it, you know it was done already and it was done in a fair manner mm. anymore it's like it's like the complete opposite it's more like a revenge than it is like you know trying to make it better you're just like it's like more like well, well we'll just take everything and switch it and it's going too far the other way now and they need to go back to center and find a way that is you know actually inclusive and actually diverse and representative not just you know agenda driven and you know certain groups of people are elevated well, again, I mean, going back to Bob Iger, and we've said in multiple videos, if you go back and watch, I, I think this had a lot to do with him trying to cozy yes. up to the Democrats because he wanted to be presidential nominee. And so he put people in at Disney to uh, further that agenda, and now they basically run amok well, in the company. Well, it's funnier because a lot of the, the, this type of person you see on Twitter um, – I really hate like NFTs and they hate like crypto and they hate, you know, blockchain and all that shit. Do we want to go there? Yes, we're going to go there. Let's go so there. So guess what Bob Iger is tripling down on now? <laughs> he is tripling down on funding for the metaverse and yes. all that go all that goes with it. Yeah, Bob Iger, that's what he's doing now. He left Disney. You'd think he would go out and, and start some sort of uh, uh, activism group or give all his money away. To all the oh, he'd never do that. All the diverse peoples that could be helped with his his uh, you know hundreds of millions of dollars that he got from no no he's he's investing in metaverse and, and blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. Right. Yeah. That's Just that's, so that's you your, know. but you're supposed to be the chosen one, Bob. No. I just think it's funny because they like worship, they worship to Bob Iger, you know, and they're like, you know, he, he's, he's out there, you know, he's, he's stepping into the, into the fray in Georgia and he's telling everybody that they don't, they don't, you know, confirm Biden. He's going to pull his money, which I thought was weird because I'm like, Disney, why is Disney openly saying this, you know? Yeah. And it was, it, he was representing Disney when he did it. And, and now he's turning around and doing the very thing that they, they seem to hate the most. <sighs> oh, Bob. Oh, he doesn't Bob. care when he's making money, when it's his money. I don't think he cares now because I think he realizes he's he's never going to be the uh, the presidential nominee, Democrat presidential nominee. So mm -hmm. what the hell? Might as well make money, right? Make the money. Um, so anyway, they talk about how Bob Iger was kind of behind Black Panther and Moana and Coco. And Which all were good. And they all were like, you know, they were done well. And I'm not yeah. saying I'm not saying there shouldn't be that. That's what people do. You, you're you're saying it's going too far, and they're like, well, you're just against, you're just an anti, you're just a foe. But it's like, no, I think those were all fantastic moves, and, and th they were good movies. And I think that, you know, I'm 100% for, you know, more diversity and inclusion because I think there's a lot of kids would like to see characters that are like themselves, and I have zero problem with it. The problem when it is when it becomes, you know, an all-consuming thing the other way. And I don't think that's any better than what you've been complaining about this whole time. So they said the result has been one hit after another, but a swath of Disney's audience has pushed back against this diversity. So here's where it's going to... Oh, here's Eternals? Where, Eternals bombed because it wasn't good. Yeah, they said uh, Eternals uh, was review bombed in the fall because it depicted a that's gay... That's not superhero. why it was review that's bombed? That's not why it was... No, New York Times, do do some research. Well, this is the New York Times we're talking about. No, it was review bombed because it was boring as hell. It was oh, and boring about as the, hell. What the hundreds of one star reviews? Yes, and I'm sure if you look, there's a bunch of, of five star reviews that 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 go the other way. Yay, gays! 
And I'm sure that's what uh, that are going to be in there just as much. It was not review bomb because of that. It was view, review bomb because it sucked. Uh, they talk about the Peter Dinklage outrage that, uh, you know, he was talking about how uh, Snow White, how dare they make Snow White and the rumors of them replacing the dwarfs with uh, CGI creatures. And um, they said it prompted complaints by others about the erasure of people with dwar dwarfism. Exa again, you know, Disney set the expectation. Disney set the expectation with, look how diverse and inclusive we are and how we listen to you and we're your friend Disney. And we're going to, you know, uh, when they go out and they say, and they have initiatives like Reimagine Tomorrow, and their whole goal of, of the company is, is basically to promote activism, or that's the illusion they're giving, then of course people have certain expectations. They expect that Disney is going to listen to every group and take every that's complaint yeah, exactly. you know, to heart. And uh, you're going to have competing groups with, you know, even even on the left side of the aisle, you're going to have competing groups being like, well, wait, I'm more important than you are. No, I'm more important. No, God, Disney, you're horrible. Okay, so Disney Plus was a whole nother can of worms when when a lot of old shows and old movies were brought to Disney Plus. They censored some of them. They put disclaimers uh, before them. Uh, Freaking the, the Muppet Show and Dumbo were flagged. Uh, they said, and it's the Stories Matter team. So again, they put these teams in place. Reimagine right. Tomorrow. Stories Matter. So two Disney executives who are, who are remaining anonymous have said that the Stories Matter team has flagged characters as potentially problematic, uh, including uh, Ursula. Ursula? Little, because her dark color skin palette could be viewed through a racial lens. Oh, fuck And off. they said she is also queer coded. What? Where? And, and mannerisms inspired in part by real life drag. Queen. Well, that is true. It was, I think, uh, divine, I think. So inspired. what? So what? You know? So what? But no one's had, no one cares. Why, why is it problematic? Cause, oh, cause she's a bad guy. Only, God. only straight white dudes can be bad guys. Is that, is that the problem? I mean. Just, just burn it all down. Disney, if you continue to listen to these people, it's, the whole thing's going to burn okay, down. Okay, what? Tinkerbell is marked for caution because she's body conscious and jealous of Peter Pan's attention. According to the executives, while Captain Hook could expose Dizzy to accusations of discrimination or prejudice against individuals with disabilities because he's a villain? So what, what is going to be your villain in these shows? How, what, if you can't be a villain unless you... Cause, you're a white man. But with all your limbs. Because otherwise, limbs. you know, you're obviously against disabled people. Oh my God. This is, this ridiculous. is, this is ridiculous. Disney declined, declined to comment. I'm sure they did. Yeah, it said oh some people God. inside Disney are concerned that such sensitivities they go are. too far. Uh, one of the executives worried that uh, looking at artistic creations through a politically correct filter could chill creativity. So I got to wonder, is this partially behind why so many people are leaving Disney to go to Netflix or leaving Disney to go to uh, Skydance or all these other animation studios? Because they're like, we can't tell stories because everything has to run through a freaking committee. And then the committee is a bunch of Twitter assholes. Yeah, pretty much. And then they go down here and they're talking about, you know, either occasionally spoke out on hot button political issues during his time. Yeah, he spoke out an awful lot. When Bob Chapek says he's going to walk it back, he is just not allowed to. Well, again, because that expectation has been set. Disney set the tone five or six years ago that they were uh, the, the ally for diversity and they've doubled, tripled down on that. And so now they can't go against the Twitter mob without there being severe backlash. Right. And the thing is, but the, the thing is, you could have been about helping to increase diversity and inclusion and you still could have done it in a, in a middle ground way. Yeah. But they're not allowed to do that because they're too busy kowtowing to the, the extremists. So they talk about, yeah, Chapek, you know, trying to be like, hey, we're just going to tell stories that have diverse people in it and we're not going to, you know, really take sides publicly in politics. And that wasn't good enough. Um, then they talk about the, uh, you know, the, the allegations of grooming and and, uh, you know, people are upset. God, they're they're upset about the Muppet Babies. Gonzo wore a princess gown to a party defying Miss Piggy's request that boys dress as knights. You know, to be fair, Gonzo is a weirdo. That's actually Gonzo's species is a weirdo. Mm -hmm. Maybe just, maybe Gonzo's species, they wear dresses to parties. Maybe they do. He's an alien in one movie, and he's just called a weirdo in other... Right, but I'm just, I'm like, <laughs> just maybe, saying, like, maybe, maybe that's, that's, what a... that's, maybe that's what they do and where he's from. I, I don't know. know. I'm just saying, like, I mean, if they want to, like, that probably was not the character. If, if you're going to be politically correct, right, having the character that, that uh, self-identifies as a weirdo... And an probably alien. wasn't the one to go with. 
No. I'm okay. just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, so they're talking about, you know, Loki. This goes on forever. God, it's just like every... Oh, my God. Controversy. Anyway, um, the very end of it. Disney, from its inception, has always represented a safe haven for children uh, before veering into homophobic and transphobic comments and asking Mr. Chapik to ditch the politicization. Now, so the New Year's and New York Times point. They're going to pretend yeah. like they're playing up the middle, but the other day they keep calling anything they don't like homophobic and transphobic. Right, right. Um, in response, Mr. Chapek, this is a, this is a shareholder said this. In response, Mr. Chapek noted the contrasting shareholder concerns. I think all the participants on today's call can see how difficult it is to try to thread the needle between the extreme polarization of political viewpoints. Then don't do it. You set the tone, Disney. You Make the decided... parks for everyone. Yeah. And then just, you know, be like, that's it. We're staying out of it. We want Disney to be a place where people can come together. My opinion is that when someone walks down Main Street and comes into the gates of our parks, they put down their differences and look at what they have as a shared belief. A shared belief of Disney magic, hopes, dreams, and imagination, but they're constantly reminded of all the stuff that's being changed. Right. And the thing to, is, like, you know, that would be the goal. I mean, I agree. You'd want people to have, you know, to be focused on what you have in common, not what you have different. And it's always been that way until recently. And it's been all since the outrage has started, like, four or five years ago. But, but meanwhile, I think it's funny, though, because when they're spending all this time focusing on this shit, other stuff doesn't get done. Like, right now, there was a thing you sent me. That said that they're telling people that, you know, hey, by the way, GD Plus, you know, use, use it at your own risk because you can't get your money back and it doesn't always work. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'm fix like, that. Spend some of your damn money that you're, you're doing for this and go fix some of the other issues. Like your GD Plus doesn't work. Your parks are overcrowded. You know, a lot of your attractions aren't finished. You know, why don't you go do that? Yeah, I mean, this is this is insane. Like, uh, you know, the changes that they're, they're making... For the most part, these are not changes that actual Disney customers have been asking for. This is them bringing in diversity consultants and... And half of them don't even probably go to the parks. No, and they're probably just... They're looking for problems. They're basically paid to look for That's problems. That's true. They are. And, I mean, taking, you know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls out of it, that that was pointless. Well, I mean, I... I, I, I I can see both sides of that one. No, I can't. I think it was. I think it was pointless. I think it was... Well, they could just say, you know, you know, something like uh, fans of all ages or, you know, Welcome dreamers to of all. Oh, that's a day. It's ages. You know, yeah. Right. Dreamers right. Of all ages, you know, or something like that. You could have done something like that. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls has been like iconic for their. Yeah. I get that. One, I, I, guess. I think people I think people would understand given how long it's been, you know. Apparently the, not. Because, you know, what probably happened like five people complained. But that one I can that one I don't think is as big a deal as some of the other things that are going on. Welcome to the Magic Kingdom, motherfuckers! <laughs> yes, we should do. I didn't have a mother. Welcome to the Magic Kingdom, daddy fuckers! <laughs> I didn't have a dad. Welcome to the Magic Kingdom, fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, sorry, mom. Do we get sorry, mom, on that? No. I don't know. I, I just think this is that's, that's that's probably problematic too. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't even want to go. I have zero, like, I used to love Disney. I looked forward to it. We had all these happy memories of going to Disney for years, you know. And Disney has been part of our lives for decades, and I don't even want to go anymore. I, I'm so tired of the drama, and all I can see now when I go is like, well, I changed this because of that, and they changed this because of that, and oh my God, what? why, why? You know, and the prices keep going up, and mm -hmm. the, the quality of the experience goes down. Yeah, that's true. The portion sizes are smaller, so people don't get fat. Yeah, I can't get they can as fat. More. I can't get as fat as I want to get, mm -hmm. and I have to pay more to get skinny. Pay I don't more. want that and be preached at. So mm -hmm. you know, I'm just at a point where I'm like, I, I don't. I'm so tired of hearing about Disney and hearing about all the the shit that's going on there. And I think a lot of people are getting to that point too. Their stock's way down. I'm actually losing money on Disney. I haven't lost money on Disney stock in years. I'm talking like five or six years. Wait, and when they close the parks? No, I, I was even ahead then because I bought so cheap oh, before. True. Like, I, I'm actually down on Disney stock. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I think a lot of people are checking out for a variety of reasons. I don't think it's all political, but everything going on right now, it is a, a luxury item. And it's easy when they court controversy like this, it makes it very easy to just cut them loose. Well, we're talking about food shortages and all this stuff coming up. And people, then they're like, you know, hey, come to Disney. And it's like. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It's kind of 
you know, at this point, like I think people are gonna put their priorities, they're gonna get their priorities straight. And I think they're gonna be like, yeah, I gotta focus on rebuilding my life post pandemic. And I'm sorry, Disney, you're too expensive and you're too damn weird. And you're just not top of mind at this point. Mm. So see ya, see yeah. ya. I don't know, we gotta wrap it up. Yep. All right, guys, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume and don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open to Brewster is eager to serve. I don't think this was in the show. So run, 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 run. Oh, you got splatted. No. Wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, she wait. was begging and what? you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey guys, Squid King here, and today we're in a- Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my god, you got the axe. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Ah! Right where you belong. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle too. Chica Pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true. You can't run them carrying trash. And you can get away with one F-bomb per PG-13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna wrap this effort up. Yes. <laughs>